Oh, Father, we thank you. I need you to declare with me. This year I enjoy ease. In the name of Jesus. My goals happen easily. In the name of Jesus. My heart desires, they happen easily. In the name of Jesus. When others are struggling, I get to ease. In the name of Jesus. The Lord goes ahead of me and makes every cricket pass straight. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord. Every mountain before me is leveled. Every valley before me is leveled. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. This month and for the rest of our lives, whatever has been difficult, because you anoint our head with oil, with the glad that we begin to walk in cup running over blessings. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, everlasting Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can you celebrate Jesus? And let me tell your neighbor, welcome to your season of ease. Welcome. Find another neighbor. Say, welcome to your season of ease. In the name of Jesus. I bring you back the prophecy. A season of ease. In the name of Jesus. All right. So very quickly, we're talking about dealing with fear. This topic is very, very instructive. Because... It's possible to be, a, to be born again, to be a Christian and be bound because of fear. And the devil understands this very well. So he uses it as a big weapon against us, you know, we with the born again Christians. And, you know, funny enough, talking about myself, I have been in leadership for quite a while. And to think that in leadership or as a pastor, you shouldn't be fearful, Abby. But that was not really my story. So I was in leadership, but I was afraid. I had a lot of fears. And um, some people's fears are obvious. You can see them and you can see that they are, you know, this one is a very fearful person. But my own fear was not like that. I hid it so well that you will not see it. And, you know, I would do things, posturous about some things and all of that. But the fear was growing deep and deep. Deep and deeper. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the, I'll just share some fears with you. One of the, you know, big fear for me was the indec indecisiveness. Hey, to decide something, I can take my time. I'll just be parabolating, not procrastinating. No, it's two different things. Procrastinating is that you agree to do something and not do it. But this one is that to make up my mind. No. And the reason why is fear. I was just very afraid. I know that when fear is not dealt with, it grows. So over the years, my fear was growing like a big mountain. And I then started priding myself. You know, I used to say, oh, I'm a, I'm a secret SSS. You know, I was very security conscious. It, it was all fear. I could tell three cars behind me. I could tell two houses. You know, I could tell everything. I'll be driving and my eyes will look everywhere. Fear. You know, my husband would say to me, ah, look at those two men. They were waiting for you at the junction. You know, so it was always tormenting me. I would say, oh, let's, let's not trafficate yet. Let's not trafficate yet. We don't know who's looking at us. You know, so I just kept going, 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 you know, in this, in this fear space. <clears throat> The way people are looking at me are making me uncomfortable. So, I was about to get married. Um, I was 25 when I got married. My, uh, my then fiancé proposed when I was 24. And so the euphoria of the marriage, it didn't really make me settle down to think about the decision I was about to make. So I remember that they brought these booklets in the, to the, the marriage booklets to the office. And I looked at it and I saw the name. It was my name. Oh. I said, who is that? It then dawned on me. I said, the poured cold water. That, voila, you're about to make the biggest decision of your life. Are you ready for this? And guess what? I, I, I don't know whether it was panic attack. 
But what had happened was a week before that, my friend had gotten married and within six months, the marriage crashed. And this is what happens with fear. Fear sometimes is gotten from either your experience or somebody else's experience. So now it was our experience, our marriage had crashed. And then yeah, I was about to get married. And I'm like, am I really ready for this? And so when I read the vows, I read in sickness and in health. Hey, I said, God, I'm about to commit my life to somebody else. What if the person changes tomorrow? And I'm like, am I ready for this? And I remember that I cried a lot. And people were wondering, ah, are we not supposed to be congratulating you? Why are you crying? And I said to them, I said, I'm calling off the wedding. I'm not doing it again. What if it becomes a wife bitter? What if tomorrow it changes? What if tomorrow I'm no longer in love with him? And so I said, I'm not doing it again. Abby. So, you know, because I already knew that I was not going to do. So it will, my fiance will be calling me. I won't pick the phone. I already knew what I wanted to do. So I went like that for like two weeks. Thinking to myself that I can't do this. The fear, the pictures. You know, pictures from my friend's marriage that crashed. It was so real in my mind that this can be, could be me. So I then, you know, I just went, I just, you know, my mom was, ah, you know, my friend, this is the Agele, this is this, I was just smiling at them. <laughs> Listen to you know that this is not happening. So one day I was reading my Bible, and that's why Bible study is very important. And then I saw, you know, I was reading Matthew 7, and it was talking about building your house. And the Lord said to me very strongly, he says, this decision that you made, it was founded on my word. Why are you changing your mind? I said to God, are you sure? He said, yes, you can go ahead with it. I said, okay, Lord. And I got that assurance in the place of studying the word of God. And so, so I went ahead. Hallelujah. And today, I'm 15 years married. We're going strong. It's not like we don't have up and down. But you know what? There is strength. Nobody is giving up on anybody. Amen. And you know, because of the experience of my friend, I almost lost out on a great guy. And then sometimes I think about it, who would have married me now? You thought my wala. But thank God I didn't give up because of fear. And you know, that's the thing with fear. Fear sometimes, it can be because of your own past experience. And you can have an experience. It does not necessarily determine that that will be the final outcome. Because if I ask everybody here that whose heart has been broken before, I'm sure all of us, they have all, they have all eaten breakfast. But because we ate breakfast, does not mean that we're not good enough to be loved. Hallelujah. And you know, and sometimes fear comes from you just stepping out of your comfort zone. And for people like us that like sureness and certainty, that's a big issue. So I bought this car, a brand new, I was, I was working in the bank, so I could afford that. Uh, a brand new Ayonda, that time, I can't remember what they call it, but I bought the car. And so the car will be looking at me, I'll be looking at the car because I was afraid to drive it. So the car, every morning I look at the car, I walk to bus stop, I go on bus to work. <laughs> it's funny, Abby. Fear is terrible. It captivates you, holds you down. And so one day, I must start up the courage. I said, you can't have this car, you know, be doing um, Obalende, Obalende. So I, ent I, I, I decided to drive. And as I entered the car, everything was going well. Fantastic. It was a good journey. All of a sudden, it started raining. Everywhere was dark and there was thunder. This one, eh, it was that one that you ca can't see anything. Guess what I started doing? I started crying. I said, God! How will I get to work? And you know, I was crying and I was praying. Lord, help me. Just help me get to Lekki First Roundup. I will pack a Lekki First Roundup. You know, but I had to keep going. Sometimes you are afraid, but yet you need to stay in that fear to break through. And so today I will be dependent on somebody if I didn't go through that experience. And I don't know what experience or what it is that God is asking you to step into. 
and your fear is holding you back, you will remain paralyzed because what you believe becomes your ultimate reality. And so if you believe that, because I actually have an aunt, which I was copying, she didn't used to drive, and she had like three drivers. And so I used to tell myself, ah, my aunt is not driving, she's okay, she's there. Uh, and I was following her path. But I, 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 I gave myself some wisdom. Hallelujah. So fear is a powerful weapon that the devil uses on us. And you know, as the acronym says, it says it's um, false experiences, experiences, right? Appearing real. Something will just happen to you. You will now juxtapose it to something else. And then you'll be wondering, that, ah, ah, this thing, do you mean that if I'm not married at 35, does that mean that on my 60th birthday, 70th birthday, after doing all this work, nobody will be with me to celebrate with me? picture of loneliness and that's not true hallelujah and so sometimes fear begins to speak to us and even us because it can happen to us sometimes or it can happen to someone else we don't separate us from fear i don't know whether you understand you feel like if it was if i was rejected then it wasn't the thing or it wasn't that, that stuff that was the issue. It was me. It's either I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy of it. And so we begin to marinate the false experience and it begins to appear real to us and then it begins to limit us and we're not able to break forth, break in from that experience. Let me tell you another, <laughs> another fear experience. I'm sure people are wondering like, now for this pastor... I wanted to have my child in, um, in America. So, I had heard that for you to get an American visa, you have to have a UK something kind of visa. But at that time, I'd only gone to Dubai. So, what did this young lady do? As a smart girl, I quickly got UK visa. Went to UK for five days. All of this because I wanted to go to America. Are you following my story? So, I then got to, you know, I did it quick, 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 quick. By the time I got back to Lagos, they said there was no date, there was no time. And you know, you had, I was trying to get the visa before the baby bump fully shows. So, then they told me that, oh, there was slot in Abuja. See all this long process, just because I wanted to go to America. So, I got to Abuja for the visa interview. And as, I, as they interviewed me, you could get what happened, Abby. I was rejected. Big, bold rejection. And as I left the embassy that day, it touched my back. You know, I felt really, really bad. I'm like, they rejected me. It wasn't that. I don't know why or what. You know, that's what you say when you don't do well in school. They say, I don't know why they gave me this score. But I was rejected. And I felt really bad. Fast forward to two years after. We wanted to now go as a family for, to apply again for the American visa. <laughs> I prayed. I fasted for two weeks. I'm like, Lord, this visa is ours in the name of Jesus. But as I prayed, every night I would dream, I would see that rejection. I said, this is America. You know, I told my husband, that, wait, must we even go there, sir? Can we just stay? So on the day of the interview, when we got to the American embassy, I was so jittery. Everything, my hands were shaking. Fear, fear, everything. I couldn't concentrate. Fear, ah, fear, is, it, it can, it's horrible. It can hold you bound. And so I was just there. And we eventually got to the front of the, of the visa person. And then the person asked me a question. Guess what? I answered wrongly because of fear. But thank God my husband was there. He just jumped me. He said, what are you saying? I couldn't even... My mind, everything had collapsed. Fear. It holds you bound. It steals from you. It takes from you. robs you. And I was there. You know, I'm going to your country to go and spend my money. So, I didn't, I didn't even understand. But thankfully... They gave us. <laughs> and you know, that's the thing with fear. Sometimes you look back and you're like, what's the big deal? Hallelujah. 
Well, guess what? The devil understands the kind of weapon it is. So he, so he, he, he maximizes it. Hallelujah. You just be driving on the road. Next thing, you just, something will just come at your heart, at your thoughts. You have accidents. You're afraid. Hallelujah. So let's, you know, let's look at the word of God. What, how we're able to break from fear through the word of God. Can you turn with me to the book of Numbers 13, 30 to, to 32? And so the, the, the back end of the story is that Moses had sent the elders to a particular land to spy on. God had instructed Moses. He said, go to this land. Go and spy on it. Go and see what's happening there. And I'm hoping that some of us can share our story about how we dealt with fear. If it's not only me that's going to share. Am I? Are we together? Fantastic. You know, so verse 30 says, And Caleb sealed the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once. So Moses, or rather, Caleb and Joshua, the two younger elders, they had gotten to the place and they had seen that it was possible. And that's the thing with faith. Faith thinks that it is possible. You know, so they were telling the people, he said, this thing is possible. We can now go and possess it. For we are well able. It speaks to your own ability to overcome it. Verse 31. Are we? All right. But the other elders with them, they went, but the men that went up with them said, we be not able to go up against these people. So imagine that two sets of people went and then they came back with different stories. Why? One was under fear, proper fear. The other one was under faith. And so it's possible that two of us, you know, we had encountered with something and somebody takes that and becomes victorious and another person takes that same thing and becomes timid. And then he says that we're not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. Verse 32. It says, and they brought to them, brought to Moses and the people an evil report. Another translator says a fearful report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have come to search. He said, is a land that eateth up the inhabitants. Ask me, is that possible? If the land was eating up the inhabitants, would there be inhabitants there? But this is their own interpretation because they looked through the eyes and the mindset of fear. They said the land was eating up its inhabitants. And so sometimes what fear does is it magnifies the problem. You get here and you're like, nobody's going to help me. Nigeria is tough. Really? You know, you say, oh, as a woman, I have to sleep with a man to make it. That's not true. Fear helps us to make judgments. That is not real. And so these people got to the place and they said, the, uh, eating themselves up, which is not true. And so sometimes we want to make, we want to move forward, but the fear in us has given us a judgment that is not of God. And so we're telling people that I've tried in this business, business doesn't work, Nigeria, my industry particularly, they'll be telling you, this industry that I'm in is a very difficult industry. Meanwhile, some people are in that industry making money. Hallelujah. Like Nigeria, now there's plenty of money in this land. I'm telling you, there is so much money in the land. But yet, some people are here saying that there is no money. You know, I was just telling my, I said, my friends are buying a lot of properties. And I'm like, hey, is it not the same Lagos that they say there is no money? How are you people able to, from here, they are buying property abroad. Tap your neighbor, say there's money in our land. Because we need to see from the eyes of faith. If the Lord planted you here, it means that the resource that you need is in the land. So they said to the inhabitants, they said, and all the people we saw in it, he said, they are men of great stature. They began to exaggerate what was not there. And Caleb had said, we have the capacity. But fear pulls them back. Fear holds them back. Verse 33 says, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grass of past God punish fear. How do you, by yourself, just walking around a vicinity, become a grasshopper? Because fear robs you off of your identity. It robs you off of your confidence. 
I mean, look at me, a whole grown woman. I get to a fellow interviewer, a woman like me, and I cannot answer a simple question. Fear, it's a, it's a robber, it's a thief. You know, eventually, all the elders didn't enter the promised land. Only Joshua and Caleb, because they saw, because they had faith, they were the only people that entered the promised land. And so you get to a place, you want to get married, you're looking for a partner, and you're saying that all the good men are married. Who says that? Oh, people, are, every Saturday there is wedding. There, is, there are good men everywhere. Ah, single people, you are not receiving this. There are good men everywhere. There are good men, good women everywhere. Hallelujah. Because yours will be good. So you only pay attention to what concerns you. The good men and the good women. Because you don't watch what you don't want. Hallelujah. Did you hear me? You don't watch what you don't If you want, um, what's that? Wait, wait. Just lover. You know just lover. I wouldn't ask you don't know <laughs> just lover. You know, when you watch this lover, you see that all they talk about is divorce. How somebody is dragging somebody's husband. And you are meditating on it. To get married will be hard. Hallelujah. So you don't watch what you don't want. But they were like grasshoppers in their own sight. May you not be a grasshopper in your own sight. In the name of Jesus. And that's what fear does. It limits you. It, it, you know, it puts you, it makes you bound. And these people, they couldn't enter the promised land. The land that God had promised them. A land flowing with milk and honey. And the Lord has promised us this year that this is our year of unstoppable multiplication. But we're looking at the currency. And fear is gripping you and saying, ah, you better just stay in survival mode. No, we're not staying in survival mode. Why? Because this year will be unstoppable. Regardless of the economy situation, we will be unstoppable. This is what the Lord has said to us. And we'll take it. In the name of Jesus. And you know, I remember that I had a story, a very not so good story, but it happened to me. I, I, was, um, I was married and I, I lacked children, so I wanted to have a child on time. But it wasn't coming. So I went to St. Nicholas Hospital after like a year. And then I remember clearly because they were doing a scan. And then as they put the scan thing, women, we understand them. And the next thing I kept hearing, oh my, I can see ovarian cyst here. Yeah. I can see fibroid here. Yeah. I can see, I can see any fallopian tube. Oh, you miss your fallopian tube. In fact, the person with no, no tack, just talking. And at the end of the day, I took the, I took the results. I went to meet the gynecologist and the person told me, Oh, you, 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 you'll be very difficult for you to have a child, you know, and all of that. <laughs> ah, the fear that gripped my heart. I'll be walking like this. I'll be seeing Baron Bolaji walking. That's what my mind will be telling me. Baron, Baron Bolaji. I'll be walking, you know, pictures. I'll be seeing other people have children. You know, I just, I just pulled myself out of the society. I stopped coming to church for a while. I pulled myself in. I felt so little. I felt less than a woman. My husband would say, let's transact. I said, what's there to transact about? Didn't you hear the report? And it was, it was such a fearful, sad. You're laughing at my transaction. <laughs> I mean, we can laugh about it. But I remember, I was, I was, a, I was a shadow of myself. I was, I was always feeling bad. You know, and for some reason, all my friends were not getting pregnant. It was not only me. You know, and then someone said to me one day at work, he says, oh, because they know me with harvesters, they know me that I'm a leader. They said, ah, how far now? How come your stomach is not coming out yet? Ah! He paid me! And I looked to God. I said, God, you heard her. And I continued. And I was going, I'll just be going. I'm like, God, I serve you. What's going on? You know, and I was telling God, giving him, you know, some, because sometimes when you marry as a virgin, you expect that, you know, sharp, sharp, sharp. I was telling God, I'm, I serve in your kingdom. I've been serving you since I was 16. This shouldn't happen to me. 
you know, and the thing, pay me, pay me, pay me, oh. <laughs> oh, you don't understand. But you not get a fearful report. But you not get an evil report. In the name of Jesus. And I, I after like a long time, I was tired of feeling down. Mm-hmm. Tired of feeling down. I just said to myself that, is it that you face this demon or this will be your narration for the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. So, I said, well, my pastor, this is many years ago. I said, my pastor tells me that the word works. He said the word works. And he says that faith, the way to chase fear away is that faith will come by hearing. And so I plugged my ears. I remember I went to Latana. I bought some books and I loaded myself with the word of God. And every morning I would declare the chastisement of my peace was upon Jesus. And by his stripes I am healed. After a while, I said, which one is chastisement? I look for another version. He said, everything I needed to have peace was upon Jesus. And by his stripes, I was healed. Hallelujah. And I kept declaring. I declared. Until one day, I told my husband, I said, my period is late though. He said, it has happened. I said, really? God answers prayers. You know, this year, you will be unstoppable. In the name of Jesus. And so before I talk about how to overcome fear, I want someone to share with us, you know, how you overcame your fear. I've been the one, you know, I've been telling you about how I overcame my fears. All right. Can I get the microphone in the crowd? All right. Toby, I think um, Tolu, Tolu wants to share. You can please sit. You can sit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, first, um, I, I used to work at um, Deloitte. I was a senior manager. And um, I already had the attraction to, to become a partner. And, and then COVID hit. And then myself and my current partner, we then decided we were going to start our business. So we've been running a business on the side, you know, while working and all of that for, for about five years. And then COVID came. So we looked at ourselves. I was like, wait, everybody's trying to save their job. We are trying to resign. What's going on here? You know, how, how am I going to tell my wife? You know, what would she say and all of that? So fear started creeping in. But, but then I, I started, you know, asking myself, what's the worst thing that will happen? I will try. If it doesn't work, I'll just go back and start looking for a job again. But I think um, one of the things that really helped me was, um, I think NLP started, you know, and every time pastor would come up, it would, um, it would encourage us. We'll, sometimes we we'll read um, Psalm 23, you know, we'll read Psalm 20, um, this is Psalm 24, so, you know, and all those words just started adding up. And then I remember one day I, I, I told myself, I said, for God has not given me the spirit Hallelujah. Fear, but of love, of power, and Come of sound So that means if I'm afraid, then I'm not in God. Mm. So I told my wife, my wife was like, hey, how are you, how are you going to pay salary? I said, don't worry, look. Just don't worry. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm not lazy. You're not lazy. So what's the worst thing that will happen? And to the glory of God, we started. It wasn't easy. On top of COVID-19, mm. you know, we now had NSAS. I remember on one occasion, we had sent one of our staff out, and he got caught up in the middle of the whole riot. He couldn't go back to his family you know, I became afraid again that God, are you sure you're with me on this? Mm. And then I took his word back to him. Mm. So I just want to, you know, um, share with everyone here that, you know, the first thing about fear is this. It's an imagination you create. Yes. Fear 
is not a state. You actually, you learn it, you create it. Mm. So if you accept it, then it begins to shape your reality. Mm. You know, and so another thing about fear is this. If you don't have a vision, you know, Abakuk 2.2 says, write your vision, make it plain. So that anyone that is running can read it. Mm. So when you don't have a vision, when fear comes, it looks as though those imaginations are greater. But if you have a vision, you can uphold your vision above those imaginations. And, and you know, as I started studying things about fear, I realized one thing. There was one data that struck me. You know, the person said 99.9% of the things we imagine as fear never come they to never pass. They never come to pass. You so, know, so tell us now, how is your business now? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, <laughs> That is such I, a good exclamation. Yes, I, I am full of thanksgiving. Wow. Um, wow. I am, I, you may Please. never understand why I say this, but let me just give you context, Pastor, if you, if you don't mind. Context or numbers, or figures, yes. or turnover, yes. or revenue. So two years ago, mm. we lost everything. Wow. So, so, you, I, you, I, so you were working in Deloitte? And then you started your own business. Yes. And then we lost all and the money at, we stashed. Wow. Over 300 million. Oh just to give goodness. you figures. Mm. And, and I spiraled into... Depression. Doubt. No, I didn't get into that. Okay, I don't believe fantastic. in depression. Okay. I did not allow myself. Fantastic. So one day I walked to Pastor. I said, Pastor, I've lost everything. Pastor mm. said, what do you mean? You know, sometimes when you go to pastor, you think maybe pastor will feel sorry for you. Pastor says, hey, you know what? <laughs> Let's start again. Come on! <laughs> and I was like, ah, pastor, it's not that easy now. But I left. I said, okay. Mm. My pastor said, let's start again. Let's start again. And then we started. But I remember telling my wife something. When eventually I had to let go of my doubts. One day I was, I was, I was at a training, Institute of Directors. And I do, during the training, I started feeling sweaty. I, I just discovered it was like I was having high blood pressure or something because I kept thinking about the losses. So I then, I just went, I just left the meeting because it was a virtual meeting. I, 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 I laid down and I told God, I said, God, if I am afraid, am I saying that the one that I lost, I did it myself? Mm. Was it not you that did it? If you did this one that I lost, that means you can even do greater things. Yes. And I look fast, fast forward. Everything I've lost, God has given me in Fantastic. multiple folds. Wow. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so much for sharing. Wow. I like what he said. He said, my pastor says you can start again. And so sometimes when the word of God comes to us, because I, I, I believe strongly that this message today, if you came here, you didn't come here in error. I don't know what it is that you need to start again, but can you start again? He said that if God was with him originally, the same God is still with you today. And so if it's possible that it's a, it's a marriage that you, you got divorced and you're wondering that maybe love, you know, Happily married after ever is not yours. Can you rethink it? Can you trust God about it? If you lost money, if you're trying in business uh, and it's not like it's not, it's as if it's not working. He said, can you, just, can, you, can you try again? Can you start again? You know, and I have here two things, three things. So Louis said one of those, you know, two or three things we can do to deal with fear. Firstly, is stop feeding your fear. You know, there are certain things that you do that you know that you expose yourself to rather that feeds your fear. As far as Peter was looking at the storm, he kept on sinking. But when he fought, when he said, Jesus, at your word, he was walking on water. As a matter of fact, I don't think that he was walking on water. I think he was walking on the word. Hallelujah. And so can you cut off what it is that is making you afraid? That's a good question. You know, what exactly is making me afraid? Why do I feel like this man will never change? Or why do I feel like I'll be lonely all the days of my life? Is it really true? Is it possible? You know, what exactly is feeding your fear? That's a good question. You know, and what are you looking at? We have to get in our life, our eyes and our ears. What are you allowing to enter your heart? He says, guide your heart with all diligence. You know, diligence, bad luck. Because out of it flows the issues of your life. 
And so question, what are you allowing to enter? Cut off the fear. Number three is when you identify the things that is causing the fear, cut, cut, cut off. You know, I have a friend that doesn't listen to the news because she says that every time she listens to the news, it affects the way she sees Nigeria. And then all of a sudden, her business is going down. So she intentionally does not listen to the news because sometimes the facts that we need, it affects our faith. Hallelujah. And so you cut off the things that you're exposing yourself to. If you're around the girls that are saying that, you know, no good guy is here again. All the good men are married. You know, let's just do baby mama things. That is exactly what you experience. Hallelujah. Like I said earlier on, you don't watch what you don't want. Hallelujah. So what is it that you want? He said, he said paint that picture in your mind. So that the false experiences appearing in you can be juxtaposed with the picture that you want. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, and that's exactly what the angel did with Mary. He said, Mary, you have a child. He said, we shared. How? He said, you know what? Let's not do front and back. Just carry your things and go and meet your auntie. Because what, where you are, what, what happens to you is a function of your environment. And so, when, you, when I didn't have a child, when I wanted a child, I had friends. Remember I said I had friends that were getting pregnant? But I ran away from them. But when I began to see myself pregnant, I went back to them again. I said, tell me, tell me, tell me. And then uh, some of them had already put to bed. I will go to the hospital, carry the baby. I was carrying my own picture. And so you go to where your testimony is and hang around it. So you're saying, oh, I'm finding it difficult to get married. You know, I'll leave the single ladies. Single ladies nights, peace. Let me go and visit my friend and I see how she and her husband are behaving. And they're all other husbands. You might feel uncomfortable, but stay there. Because when you're in their neighborhood, if God can do it for one, he will do it for the next person. And so you stay, you hang around the people that have your own kind of testimony. Amen. Secondly, the way to conquer fear. Number two, question the fear. You know, I find that fear is based on assumptions, ignorance, lack of knowledge. Question the fear. Is it true that if I have a fallopian tube, I can't have children? People have had no fallopian tube and had children. Question it. Is it true that if I'm not married at 35, I'll be lonely? Question the fear. Speak fear, he gets language. He speaks to us. You to speak to the fear. Begin to question it. Is it true that, you know, someone broke my heart? It means that I'm rejected. No, I, am, I will be well loved. So you question the fear. Tap your neighbor, say, question the fear. Yeah. It's not true that if you're, if you're not married at 35, you won't have children. You won't have good children and enjoy your children. You won't have a good family and enjoy your family. It's not true. But the devil keeps impressing in our hearts. Ah, this one. You are coming from Agbado. You cannot amount to much. Ah, who knows you? You don't have any connection. You know, impressing in our heart different pictures. <laughs> God punish fear. You know, but we know that our weapons of our welfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through stronghold. To pulling down, mighty through God in pulling down the strongholds in our minds. And so what you question the stronghold, you question the fear. He's saying that it's a year of um, unstoppable multiplication. But the fear is not allowing you to take the step for unstoppable multiplication. And you realize that you, we can't keep doing the same thing, you know, and expect unstoppable multiplication. No. You know, you can't do business the way you did it last year this year and expect unstoppable multiplication. No, the, you know, it's called insanity. You can't date the same kind of guys, even though they are different names and expect a change. No, this is that year that the thing that God has placed in your heart will come to pass. And so you need to begin to step out so that you can see the hand of God. If Joshua did not move to Jericho, Jericho would never have come down. And so you, you need to Decide that I need to do what I need to do so that God can do what he needs to do. Hallelujah. And so as I round up the message, you know, today, what exactly do you need to do so that God can do what he has to do? I need us to match our prayer points with our actions. We're praying on next level. We're praying enough. Prayed enough. 
it's time for us to begin to step out, question the fear. What exactly do I need to do? What are the things that the Lord has laid in my heart to do so that I can possess that which he has asked me to possess? The Bible records that the sun stood still once for Joshua. But if Joshua sat down, you know, still, the sun will never stand still. The Lord wants the sun to stand still on some of us. But we need to stand so that the sun can stand still. We need to do what we, what we have to do. So that we can see the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. You know, I'm very tempted with us to share scripture, but I see the time. And I know that today is our Thanksgiving Sunday. But I feel strongly to share it. Let's, let's turn our Bible. I think it's in the book of John. Yeah. John 11 verse 20. This is the story of Martha. And how Martha almost used that fear to keep Lazarus dead. And so, this is verse 20. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, she quickly went to meet him. But Mary, her sister, still, uh, sat still in the house. And you see, when somebody heard that Jesus is in town, you hear there's wine press, you hear that there's next level prayers. She ran as though she was full of fear, of faith rather. But hidden in all the activities of Martha was fear. You know, let's go to the next verse. And then said Martha unto Jesus, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. And she was telling Jesus all the judgment, all the things, all our, you know, imaginations, all our problems. I said, why are you just coming? If you had come earlier, oh, why are you late, God? You know, but Jesus said, I'm here now, verse 23. And then Jesus said unto her, your brother shall rise again. What a powerful word. You know, God, Jesus gave her a powerful word. You would think that, yes, she would say, yes, I believe. Mm -mm. I fear. Verse 24. She says, I know. Verse 24. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Is that what Jesus was saying? No. But I fear did not allow her to see that the word can come to pass. You know, she was bound on the fact that her brother was dead. And even though Jesus, the resurrection and the life was there, she couldn't remove that mindset. And then Jesus said to him, he said, in case you don't realize who is talking to you, in case the word of God is coming to you today and you don't realize, he says that I am the resurrection and the life. He said that if you believe in me, though you were dead, you shall see life. You'd have thought she believed, right? Yeah. And so she said, and whosoever liveth, this is Jesus, and believe in me shall never die. Jesus then asked her, my sister, do you believe? And then she responded, yes, Lord, I believe that thou art Christ. Can you see? She did not say, I believe that my brother will rise again. Fear, subtle, with strongholds. Even though she was running after Jesus, even though you're coming to church, you're coming to NLP, you're saying, Grace, 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 this is my story. You know that God can do miracles for other people, but in your own mind, you don't really believe that grace can be your own story. And then she said that, you know, I know that you are the son of God that will come into the world. Hallelujah. Let's jump to verse 25. Yeah. Verse 25, please. Then Jesus said unto her, oh, okay. I'm sorry, verse 39 actually. We're done. Verse 39. See, Martha. And you remember that the last conversation was that she believes, right? He said, Do you believe? She said she believes. Verse 39. And Jesus said unto her, So they then got to the tomb of Lazarus. As you have said that you have believed, it's now time for you to take the step. She said, Jesus said unto her, Take away the stone, Martha. Thy sister of him that was dead said, this is now matter that believed that Jesus was the resurrection and the life. He said unto him, by this time, another big excuse. He said, for he has been dead for four days. He is thinking. And so what she was saying to Jesus, uh, Jesus, I'm really done with this thing. I'm done. He's thinking. Forget about it. I don't want to be disappointed again. I'm done complaining about the marriage. This man cannot change. I'm done with the three IVFs. I can't really have a child. I'm tired. I'm, I'm full of fear and doubt. I don't want to try again. He's thinking. He's dead. Jesus, leave the matter. Even though she claimed that she believed. And then he said to her in verse 40, he says that once again, said I not unto you, Jesus was patient with matter. He said, I say this again unto you, if you believe, 
If you can take away the fear, it says that you will see the glory of God. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. If you will believe and take away the fear and do as God has asked you to do, you will see the glory of God. This year, your life will be seen, will be the evidence of the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Can we rise up on our feet as we pray?